So what is the OAuth resource owner password grant and why should you not use it in your application? So let's recall what our goal is. Our goal is that we want to give some third party application limited access to an API on behalf of a user. Okay, so that's our main use case we have. And the question here is, let's say I have this diagrams.net application. How does this thing get access to my Google Drive so it can save some file, right? If I save here, now it's uploading. How can we do that? Because in fact, we don't want to share the password, right? And this is exactly what the password grant does. So the password grant expects that the client application is asking for the username and for the password. And then you exchange it for an access token on the authorization server. And obviously that's like a big anti-pattern because uh, it's very easy to just leak these credentials here. And obviously it's not really an option for any like standard application. So if you have an application that you don't trust, that's not an option anyway, right? But let's just assume this is like some application that is, I don't know, in the intranet of Google, okay? Some internal application, something that comes from the same organization, right? Um, maybe you could say, yeah, but then we could use it, right? Ah, well, the auth group still says, no, don't use it, even if it's like a first party application. Because what you do is you train the user to enter like the username and password on like website on third party websites or like on other tools. And that's not a good thing. And the second reason is that it's really hard to do like advanced forms of authentication here. So like multi-factor authentication or even passwordless authentication with WebAuthn. And this is also something that you find in this in the security uh, best practices over here. So here it says in uh, section 2.4, uh, the client or uh, the resource owner password credentials grant, quite a long name, must not be used. It insecurely exposes the credentials of the resource owner to the client. Even if this client like has been in, this results in an increased attack surface. Yeah, that makes total sense. So don't use it. And um, yeah, if you have this, if you have such a case that you want this application to access uh, an API on the user's behalf, just use the authorization code grant with Pixie and then you're good. Yeah, uh, cool. So one more thing, it's like a little technical detail I wanted to mention. You might say, oh, well, but this was like the first use case of OAuth, right? I want to give a third party application limited access on behalf of one individual user. What about the second use case? Well, the second use case is already covered with the client credentials flow. And on a technical level, you could argue, well, the client credentials flow and the password flow are pretty much the same if you talk about the machine to machine communication, right? Because if you, whether you call it client secret and then you send the client ID and client secret to the authorization server and then exchange it for a token, it's the same like, uh, or it's pretty much the same uh, like the password grant in that case, right? So if both are machines, uh, you could, you might as well also use the password grant to kind of get like an access token here. And here's like, in my opinion, was a little bit unclear, or at least I haven't found a real answer to that. The thing is, I think that the all spec says if you have a machine to machine communication, use the client credentials grant. And then the password grant was initially just for the first use case. And that's why now they say you must not use it. So even though on a technical level, if you look at the second use case, it's pretty much the same like the client credentials grant. The difference is that in the second use case, you have you give one application general access to an API. So not on behalf of one user, but on behalf of the application itself. And this is already covered with the client credentials grant. So typically when people talk about the password flow, uh, they talk about like the first use case where like a user is involved. And obviously if the user is involved, like don't use it. And in general, they just say, okay, to not create any confusion, we just take this entire thing out. Yeah, so that's it pretty much for this video. Don't use the password grant in OAuth. Always use like the authorization code grant. If you have a server to server communication, use client credentials. And uh, yeah, that's it pretty much for this video. Let me know in the comments below whether this explanation was clear. If you have any question, you can also reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at production coder. So thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.